guys, this is Algirdas with Playing Tips. And the topic for this video is going to be how to develop a good quality sound. And what is the good quality sound? So there are a couple of things to consider when it comes to good sound. Uh, things such as airflow, embouchure, control, which gives that clarity, that flow to your sound. And there are musical uh, features to your sound, such as having a distinctive timbre, certain width to your sound, certain brightness, certain lightness to your sound. And uh, today we're going to talk about that. First of all, you need to determine what kind of player you are. Are you a brass band player, military band player, a soloist? That's very, very important because um, each of these structures have a different definition for a good sound. For example, if you're looking to become a military band player, you don't necessarily want to have a specific color to your tone and specific vibrato because it's not going to blend. You're playing in ensemble and you need to have a very good basic sound which will have a great airflow, great control, uh, which will give that clarity, that brightness and that ability to project in a band. If you're a soloist though, it's very, very important to develop your own distinctive colors. Whenever I hear a great solo player, um, despite of what instrument he plays, whether it's trumpet, euphonium, tuba, I can pretty much usually tell who that person is just by listening to the sound, because there's like specific colors and distinctiveness to the sound. And that is being developed by constantly listening, experimenting, and realizing what you want from your sound. So if you want to sound like players such as Steve Mead, Glenn Van Loy, or anyone else who has this dark, operatic type of sound, you're naturally going to be thinking of this X shape in your mouth, you're going to be thinking of rounded lips, massive airflow, very warm air, but maybe you're into sound which is a little bit lighter, a little bit crispier, brighter, such as Christian Lindbergh, David Chalice, then you'd be concentrating on making sure that you're super loose, you're always relaxed, you're uh, all about efficiency. So, you know, there's different technical qualities to your sound and different musical timbre qualities to your sound. So what I want you to try now is to do a little experiment for me. Pick your favorite player of your instrument. So let's say you play trumpet. So it might be somebody like Alan Vituti, or you play tuba, it might be somebody like Ron Sampali, and etc. So anyway, uh, any player you like. And then listen to one of his recordings and try to replicate his sound. Take your instrument and try to sound like him. And really, really, really have that tone and that timbre in your head and try to replicate it with your head, with your mind. And let me know what you think. You know what? Actually, I'm going to try and do this little experiment um, as we go along. So let's say I wanted to sound like, uh, what can I sound like? Let's say Stephen Mead. If I wanted to create that certain specific sound. So now what I'm having in my head is his sound. And um, actually, let me know what you think. Does it sound anything like Stephen Mead? <laughs> So this was my best Steve impression and um, I'm actually going to have to listen to this recording whether it actually makes any sense but um, when I was playing I was trying to imagine of a sound and um, I'm not exactly sure what I pulled it off but that's the way I think about developing my sound. I have a clear vision of what I want to sound like. Me personally I like the sound which is kind of on, on the lighter side, a little bit more controlled, sometimes a little bit more aggressive, a little bright. So whenever I practice and whenever I play my pieces, this is what I'm shooting for. And I kind of try to mix it up. That's the thing about me. I don't like having a singular one type of sound or one type of vibrato. I constantly try to mix it up and develop my own personal tone. And um, I find that very, very, very useful when it comes to my personal practice. So obviously there's more to developing your sound and a good quality sound than just thinking of it or singing, but that's an important part. Imagining, 
visualizing it, brain and your mind is a very, very, very powerful tool. So use it wisely and use it on a daily basis in your practice. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, post them in the comment box below or uh, post them on my Facebook page. I'm going to put the links uh, in the description box. Make sure to share this video if you liked it. Help this channel grow. Uh, I'll try and answer all the questions as soon as possible, so don't worry if they don't come up within a week or something. Nowadays I'm getting quite a bit of it and I'm trying to touch on every single one of them. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, stay safe, work hard, keep motivated. Till the next time.